So you got into dental school. Congratulations. All of the hard work and all of the hours of studying have finally paid off. But it's not over yet. If you want to know how your D1 year is going to shape out to be and how things are changing across the country in all dental schools, stay tuned. So how's your first year of dental school going to look like? It's going to look something like this. Oh, come on, grab him, Josh! He's coming! Let me go! I'm trying! Just right there! Just right there! I'm coming! I'm oh, falling off the ceiling! I know! So it's going to be pretty crazy. It's going to be super fast, and you got to find out some way to hold on and just go with the flow and continually do well. You'll be finishing entire courses that it would take a semester to finish in as little as a week. Not only that, you might even get tested on that material that same week too. And a way to do this is to perfect your study method. So you gotta find out what works for you. Some people rewrite entire lectures, some people write on top of lectures, and some people make flashcards. So you gotta do whatever's been working for you in the past and stick to it. Do not change your study method in dental school unless you start with that change when you start and keep at it. Because if you decide to change your study method midway through dental school, it might hurt you on that exam or that module. So I personally, along with a lot of other people in my class, use Notability. It's an app for iOS and it lets you input the PowerPoints or PDF lectures and import them into the app and then you can write notes on them or even record live with the professor talking during the lecture and what's really cool about it is that if you remember writing something then uh, you can actually control f what you wrote as well it's not just gonna find everything that's typed in the lecture but also what you write with your own handwriting is going to be able to be found with the control f as well so do what works for you and keep at it like immediately after your white coat ceremony you're going into the books you're going to start heavy on all the didactic science material that the ABEA wants every school to focus on and depending on what that module is it can be as little as a day it can be as long as two three weeks it just depends because each material and subject matter is going to be exposed to us to a certain extent in the board exam too. I'll talk about that in a second and how that's changing. So once you kind of get the groove of things, your school is probably going to also start implementing SIM around halfway through your first semester of dental school. And that's where you're going to really get to learn a lot of the things and a lot of the tools that you'll be using on a daily basis in practice as a dentist. And it's not like, oh, let's finish all the didactic and then go into SIM. You're going to be doing both at the same time. So this is really when it comes down to time management and being able to prioritize things. So if you're in SIM clinic and you're learning how to do a class two preparation and you're also in a class like head and neck, then you really have to prioritize your time and make sure you get everything done. So if you feel like you're struggling in head and neck and you're doing pretty good with your hand skills on class one preparations, then you should probably focus on head and neck. And the same can go for the opposite. If you're doing well in head and neck, but you're struggling with your hand skills, you might want to put in some more time in the sim clinic. And at this point of the game, you kind of learn how to prioritize and manage your time because you study for the DAT so much. And the same thing is going to apply in dental school too. You're going to have to manage a lot of things going on at the same time. And you're going to have to figure out the best way to manage everything. So something that I did was that if I saw that I had eight to nine days before an exam, and the first class instruction was starting on Monday, I'd try my best by the end of the day to catch up with the lecture material. If I didn't pay attention in class for whatever reason, if I zoned out, then I'd write in the lecture where I zoned out, and then I'd go home and then continue on the lecture from the video that was posted that same day. So being able to write your notes and follow with the class is something that's really important so that when it's two, three days before your test, all you're doing is reviewing your notes and reviewing the lectures. You're not having to like relearn everything for the first time. And personally, I have to go through the lectures four to five times for it to be committed to memory. Some people can just sit in class and listen to the lecture talk and they're fine. I'm not like that. Everyone's different. You know how you are at this point. So you got to do what you know is going to work for you. Now, like I said, you're going to be doing a lot of things. You're going to have quizzes, assessments, exams, competencies, 
meetings, lunch and learn, so many things that you're gonna have to do all simultaneously. And it's gonna be stressful and you're probably gonna start struggling in something. So you're gonna have to figure out what that is and do something about it. So if you feel like you're someone that is pretty comfortable when it comes to didactic science coursework, you might struggle in the sim clip because if you haven't had much exposure to hand skills and like using manual dexterity to do things, then it's something you have to really learn. It's a skill that you build upon every time you go in the sim clip. Now, if you have exposure to hand skill and you have that manual dexterity, then maybe didactic work is gonna be something that you struggle with. So everyone's gonna figure out something that they need to put more attention and emphasis on because dental school really tests you and it tests you in ways you've never been tested before. Now, a very good takeaway from this that you will go through is to never, ever focus on the low points. You will, you will struggle through something, whether it be your class two preparation in the sim clinic and you're frustrated that everyone else is being able to do it and you're not, or there's a class that everyone's doing well in didactic wise and you're not. So it's gonna happen sooner or later and it might not happen your first year, might not happen your second year, but it can happen even in your third year. You might be struggling with a certain patient situation that you're working with or it could be any part of dental school. Not everyone struggles the same way. Everyone has a different thing that they go through. Everyone has different experiences that they go through. They bring something different to the table. So you're gonna struggle somewhere you're gonna struggle some way and you gotta get through it, learn and be proactive. So if you're struggling in a class, you gotta make sure that your mood doesn't carry over to that next module or next exam. If you realize that you have three exams in a module and don't do well in the first one, you gotta do things, man. You gotta go over that exam, look over it. You gotta probably spend more time study. Don't let the results of a future exam be dictated by a prior failure. You gotta keep your head in the game. You gotta hold on and you gotta do things to help you move forward because no matter how you perform on an exam from yesterday, there's lines of exams waiting for you with your name written on it for tomorrow. So you got to definitely keep your head up and do things to help you. If you know that people are doing really well in classes, you might wanna to talk to them and ask them what they're doing that's different from what maybe you're doing and maybe implement some of those things. The same could be said for Sim Clinic. I mean, my brother sits right next to me in Sim because we're in the same class in the same dental school. So whenever we're struggling on something, we always talk to each other and we ask each other what we're doing different or some technique of approaching something. So you gotta talk to people, you gotta do what works for you and keep your head up. That's the most important thing. Simran Singh made a really good do's and don'ts video for dental school. I'm gonna put a link for it in the description. It touched upon a really important topic and that's not to compare yourself. I'm glad he brought it up because it's something that really can mess you up moving forward. But you know it's kind of hard because when you have a brother that's like only a year apart from you, everything becomes a pretty friendly competition, whether it be sports, whether it be school or anything. Being only a year apart and going through the same tract, we went through the same high school, went to the same undergrad, both were pre-dense and both ended up getting into the same school at the same time. So naturally, everything was a competition no matter what we were going through. Even right now in dental school, whenever we get notifications of grades being posted, the first thing is, yo, how did you do? And then we like compare each other. So it's one thing to see where you're at and it's a totally another thing to see where you're at and then degrade yourself and question if you're even cut out for it. You got accepted for a reason, man. So you got to continuously impress who? Yourself. Nobody else. Yes, comparing can be bad, but only do it if you know that it's going to help you. If you're going to be comparing yourself to other people because you just want to degrade yourself, you don't understand why you're in, or you, you're questioning whether you even should be in, then that's something that is a huge no-no and definitely you need to stop doing that immediately. Now, an element that's changing with dental schools across the country is the NBDE. So the NBDE, the board exam, prior used to be a two-part exam. So you take the first part between your first and second year, and you take the second part between your third and fourth year. So now, the ADA has changed it to where there's gonna be one board, and you're probably gonna take it between your third and fourth year. So in the old board, the first board used to be heavy on didactic, and the second board used to be heavy on clinical. So now what they're doing is they're making that one board, like I said, and they're combining both aspects in one. So at our school, what they're telling us is ADEA is putting a bigger emphasis on the clinical portion, and then a less 
and then less on the didactic. Now, that's not to say didactic is being completely eradicated. They're still gonna have elements of it in the exam, but that's how it's gonna be. And this is exactly why so much of the curriculum across the country and every school is changing so much. The ADEA has told the schools and everyone that they're focusing on certain aspects of didactic material and then cutting some out. So that's why there's a lot of schools that are cutting down or increasing certain educational requirements for certain classes. So for example, in our first semester, we had a class that was one day, it was metabolism. And the classes before us, they had it for like about two weeks. Head and neck was something that everyone had one module for, it was about a week or two weeks. And now we have three parts of head and neck. We had one head and neck module earlier in the first semester, another head and neck module in our second semester, and we're gonna have a third one before our summer break starts. So what everybody went through in the past is gonna be totally different from what you and I are gonna go through in years to come. Now, something that's really cool, aside from the fact that we'll only be taking one exam, we'll only be taking it in D3 year, is that everything is gonna happen a lot faster now. Students are gonna be able to get into the sim clinic faster. Students are gonna be able to see their patients in the clinic faster. So you'll be really exposed to everything much quicker than people have in the past. It's really gonna help a lot in boards in that we'll be able to have that patient interaction and see cases that we're learning about in class that will then be tested on on the board. So it's gonna be really cool to see how it's gonna kind of translate into the next few classes that are coming into dental school. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys kind of got some insight in terms of how your D1 year is going to be and what you can kind of expect. And yeah, see you in the next one. Peace.